What you've heard is true. There has been a purge and Critical Role videos have been taken down from YouTube. Be still thy critter's heart. But it wasn't a copyright claim that failed this content. Nor did YouTube remove the videos on their own initiative. The decision to remove Critical Role content was taken by Critical Role. Role. Nobody forced Matt Mercer's hand when he plunged the dagger into Critical Role's online presence. At least, no one overtly forced his hand. And this is obviously big. It's a huge amount of content removed. Even if you're someone that doesn't watch Critical Role, we have now lost hundreds of videos. Days worth of content gone. Presumably forever. This is a loss to the TTRPG community and definitely very sad. So why? Why do this? Why has this happened? So first up, this isn't the end of Critical Role. Nothing close to that. They're still going strong. Critical Role is still the RPG equivalent of a cap video in the early 2000s when it comes to view numbers. And they certainly didn't delete all this content because a cast member wore a t-shirt praising Romanian dictator Nikolai Ceausescu in an actual play three years ago. That genuinely never happened. But there is a dark and extremely unpleasant reason for this purge. You see, there is one constant to all the videos that were removed this week. And it's that they all feature Critical Role member Brian Wayne Foster, or ex-Critical Role member at this stage. He is also the ex-fiancé of another Critical Role member, Ashley Johnson. And earlier this year, she filed a restraining order against Brian, alleging abuse and extortion claiming that he committed, quote, many acts of terror, including repeated insults and property damage as a result of his, again another quote, very unhinged mind from his addictive use of narcotics. Much like Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu. And the emergency protection order that she sought was granted by a judge, with Johnson saying that Brian Foster has the ability to murder and would seek to harm not only her, but her family as well. Apologies for that info dump. I know people come here for fun, but um, sorry, not, not a lot I can do with that material. And this is obviously incredibly difficult and abuse is never okay. And that entire situation sounds like a really difficult scenario that I would not wish on anyone. And I really don't want to comment on that situation in this video, but it is the context for the removal of the Critical Role videos in question. All of the actual plays featuring Brian Foster have been removed from the Critical Role channel, and in fact, my favorite Critical Role actual play of all time was caught in this purge. On Deadwood was co-created and featured as the DM Brian Foster, and this was genuinely one of my favorite Critical Role shows to watch while I paint miniatures. I loved the fantasy horror cowboy aesthetic and all the role playing, and now it has been permanently removed, which is a real bummer. Alongside this, we've also lost Honey Heist one and two which had a lot of fans, and lots of the sideshow content like Between the Sheets and Talks, Machina, etc. There is a huge list of content removed, though none of it is the main Vox Machina show. And to be entirely honest, the entire situation really sucks. A lot of this content is really good content, and its removal wasn't announced. Instead, it was hidden as quietly and swiftly as a demon's whisper. This means that it might not have been able to be archived by fans, so I'm not sure how easy it will be to find this content online going forward, even if you go really looking. And from a preservation of media perspective, this kinda sucks. Personally, I don't really like to see content, videos, books, games, anything. Any media get removed and taken out of the public sphere and then hidden away in the depths of the unlisted YouTube video vaults. And it definitely brings up the question as to whether or not content should be retroactively removed because of the problematic attitudes or actions of a creator or participant in that content after that content is made and monetized. It's a really unfortunate reality that a huge proportion of content is created by awful people who have done truly terrible things. Just look at Hollywood. And I don't think that you can really separate art from the artist, but it gets even more complicated in this situation because there is an added wrinkle to this tale. A major component of the conversations about this topic online in Critical Role and Dungeons and Dragons spaces 
have revolved around the idea that Critical Role must have removed all this content to ensure that Bran Foster will not receive any future royalty payments for his appearances in these Critical Role videos. And I totally disagree with this argument. I think it completely misses the mark. But the contention that I've heard is that Bran Foster likely negotiated a contract with Critical Role when he was first formally employed by them. And as part of his contract with Critical Role, it is speculated that he may have negotiated royalty fees to be paid to him whenever any videos he is featured in receives a view. And therefore, it could be the case that one of the reasons that all the videos featuring him were taken down is because Critical Role are attempting to avoid having to pay Brian those royalty fees. Now, I want to add here, I am firmly outside of my wheelhouse on this topic. We're no longer in the realm of clown law right now. And I have no Hollywood experience. In fact, they won't even let me in the only planet Hollywood in Northern Ireland ever since I tried to manhandle George Clooney's bat suit nipples as seen in Batman and Robin 1997. And really, that restaurant is as close as I'm getting to the silver screen in this lifetime. No, like all my ancestors, it's life in the potato mines for me. But I know that residuals are a thing, and royalty fees are a thing too, and ultimately all of this stuff would have been negotiated by Brian with Critical Role. And Ashley did allege that Brian was trying to extort her when she filed for that emergency protective order back in May this year. In fact, he allegedly attempted to extort $150,000 from her, which is, um, it's pretty, it's a pretty significant amount of money. And it therefore signals that as an alleged crack addled maniac, Brian may have some money issues. But I do not think that the cause of this mass delete is critical rule trying to keep Brian hands out of the money cookie jar. I don't think that's relevant at all. For one, in contrast to the days of old when the actors of Friends were getting paid millions of dollars in royalty fees every single time an episode was aired, i.e. the go-go 90s, we now live in the modern streaming era where royalty fees have notoriously grown to be much less lucrative, i.e. the no-no 20s. In fact, it's that very reason as to why the actors union recently voted to go on strike. Orange is the new black actor Kimmy Glenn notoriously showed off her residual payments as a supporting cast member on that incredibly popular show on TikTok, and her residuals apparently amounted to $27. Now, Critical Role might be more generous with their residual payments than Netflix, but honestly, I think that what is more likely is that this purge was simply done in solidarity with their friend and still active member of the Critical Role cast, Ashley. And the Critical Role genuinely no longer want to be associated with Brian Foster. And fair enough. If the allegations are true, then yeah, I wouldn't want to be associated with them either. And on a deeper, more human level, the members of Critical Role likely just don't want to see Brian anymore. Never mind hosts' his content on their channel. And they just want to support their friend Ashley. And it's really hard to argue with that. And from my perspective, creators should have control over their content. As an audience, we aren't entitled to it in any way. Once something is released into the world, we can all engage with it, view it, it, interpret it, but ultimately hosting it, continuing to display it, that power lies with the creators. And this gets even more complicated with collaborative work and much of the content that Brian appeared in featured other members of the Critical Role cast or were focused on other members of Critical Role, like the interviews that he hosted on Between the Sheets. And I'm assuming that outside of Brian, everyone involved in these Critical Role shows are happy for this content to be taken down and delisted. And this is pretty exceptional for Critical Role. They've never done this before. Brian isn't the first estranged member of the crew. Orion Akaba was notoriously dropped from the main Vox Machina show after taking part in a lot of content in season one. But episodes featuring him weren't removed and they can still be viewed. Even his alleged cheating. <laughs> Certainly, even Critical Role as a show is losing money on this. No more views on those videos means no more ad revenue for them as paltry as 
ad revenue is on YouTube. So this is a cut to their own income too. So it's just a very sad situation altogether. Definitely a huge loss for everyone, but this is life. It is messy and unfortunate. And like the best of D&D quests, there are no easy answers or solutions to any of these problems. I just hope that things are able to get better for everyone. And if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the new RPG from Critical Role Candela Obscura, then check out this video here. And a huge thanks to my patrons, especially Sonic Bread, Crypto Kev, Mr. Zarby, Novani, and Travis Hunter. Thanks so much, guys. Hopefully next week's video is about a bit of a lighter topic, and I'll catch y'all next time. Bye bye